What's up guys? My name is Chris Gottskesson, for those of you who don't know, and I am a professional real estate photographer whenever it pays the bills. And this is the Really Right Stuff TVC 24L version 2 with BH40 ball head. It is, without a doubt, the best tripod I have ever used. And I hate using it for real estate photography. So this isn't the tripod we're going to talk about today. What we're actually going to be talking about is the best tripod for real estate photography. So roll the intro, let's jump into it. So when I first started photographing real estate, the information that I received on what tripod that I needed was super limited and to be honest, not good. I ended up going with the Really Right Stuff tripod because I knew it would also serve me well for landscape photography, which I do a lot. Now, Brenda is the best tripod I could ever imagine. It checks all the boxes for me for what I normally like to shoot. But what's weird is a great tripod for landscape photography might actually end up making the worst tripod for real estate. Brenda just didn't really end up working out as well as I had hoped for the type of photography that I was doing photographing properties. So when I started looking for a better tripod for real estate photography, uh, I had a few things in mind. A lot of the things that I love about Brenda are some of the things that make it difficult to use for real estate. For one thing, I hate center column tripods. Brenda doesn't have a center column. It is a super tall tripod, well over six feet without needing that. And that's great most of the time, except for real estate. You need a center column tripod. Uh, it has a ball head. I love ball heads. They're great, they're versatile, they're easy. Not great for real estate. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna split it into two segments really. I'm gonna show you guys what I looked for in a real estate tripod and what I ended up going with uh, to fill all those needs that I had, to check those boxes, if you will. Uh, what I love about that tripod I picked and what I don't love about it. So here we are. Uh, this is my real estate photography tripod. When it comes to finding the perfect real estate photography tripod, really it's gonna break down into two main things, the legs and the head. So for tripod legs, I wanted legs that would have three to four sections when they expand that would get me to at least my eye height with the center column. Now the reason that's important is because a lot of times we shoot on uneven ground. So say you're like, there's a step on a patio or you're on a hill in the backyard. You need to be able to even that out in order to get the correct uh, level on your tripod. The reason I went with a center column tripod and why I actually wanted that so bad for real estate is because really there's two tripod heights that you're using in real estate. The first one is seated height. The second one is cabinet height. And to be able to move between the two, you just, raise and lower the tripod, super quick and easy. Uh, that saves a lot of time when you're going through the house and you only have 20 minutes to shoot a 3000 square foot property, every second counts. That was super important to me. Now you can do that without a center column tripod. It's just a pain, it takes a long time to get everything even. I don't recommend it, center column all the way. Now one thing you're gonna notice about a center column tripod is it is not nearly as stable as one that doesn't have a center column, especially the higher it goes because really that center of gravity is higher. So make sure when you're picking a tripod out, it's stable. One thing, little tip, uh, if you will, when you're at home sitting down to get your seated height on your tripod, set the legs up. I know that on this tripod I can extend two legs and if I have the uh, top here with the ball head, and the apex for the legs. If I just like bring it down to the point where it's kind of uncomfortable to have my hand between there, I know that's the perfect height for seated height. And then when I need to raise it for cabinets, just pull it up. And when I need to go shoot the living room, bring it back down to that squished position, we're good to go every time. Just a quick little tip there. Another thing that I was looking for with uh, the, the leg sections is I wanted twist locks. Now twist locks and flip locks, uh, they're, <laughs> There are some fierce discussions about that, which one's better. And I went for twist locks for a reason. Now, when I was hired, my company told me, get flip locks, they're faster, they're easier, blah, 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 blah. Total lies, don't listen to that. Here's the thing about twist locks that are better. First off, they're just as fast, okay? Easy to do. Secondly, during this time of the pandemic, this is much easier to sanitize with like some Lysol wipes or something. I don't have to worry about flipping it open and getting in all the nooks and crannies. I can just 
twist around with a Lysol wipe and we're good to go. Another great thing about twist locks is you don't really need to do any servicing unless you're getting into some serious like salt water and sand and stuff. You don't ever really need to get into these. You just tighten them, loosen them. That's all that's ever going to happen. With flip locks over time, they loosen, you have to clean them, oil them, do all sorts of weird stuff. They're a total pain. I don't recommend them. Speaking of maintenance over time, one thing that was really important to me was that the pivot points at the apex were user serviceable and adjustable easily. With these guys, you've got two Allen screws, two hex screws, where you can just tighten and loosen because what happens is over time they do get loose and you need to tighten those up. Uh, for a while I was using a Manfrotto tripod, which is great, I love it, I'm recording on it right now, but the pivots are not serviceable. I've tried everything, I can't tighten them up. And what would happen is I would have my hand underneath as I'm grabbing and the weight of the leg itself would just guillotine right on my hand and it hurt really bad and there was no way to tighten those up. So that was something that was really important to me in getting the right tripod. This is also important because throughout the day, throughout a single shoot, you are opening and closing these to get in and out of rooms through doorways all the time. So that loosens them up over time. Onto the tripod head. This is like the brains of it. I don't even know how to describe it, but this is where all, almost all of the user interface is and this is incredibly important. Now, ball heads are great for a lot of things. I love them. They're super versatile. They work in almost every situation, but they're not great for real estate. And the reason why is because in real estate, you have three axes, axes that you're gonna be moving and adjusting in order to compose your shot properly. And that composition usually goes in the same order every single time. Uh, you get your horizon level, okay? You get your pan to get your third wall composed in the shot, and then you get your verticals correct, because you have to have straight verticals to have a good real estate shot. And the head that I was looking for, I knew that there was one type of head that would do that uh, perfectly, and that is a geared head. Now, a geared head allows you to adjust each individual axis independently and super precisely. This has changed the game for me, and it makes it so fast and easy to get shots done and move through a house quickly. Now, another thing that was really important to me uh, for a ball head was that it be Arca Swiss compatible. I use Arca Swiss plates for everything. I think it's just the easier way to go. And this guy right here has Arca Swiss. So really it just kind of checks all the boxes. So let's jump into the actual tripod that I use. <clears throat> I use, now I have to actually read this out because I don't know what it is about tripod manufacturers, but they can't name tripods worth the crap. I use the, the Benro TMA28A Series 2 Mach 3 aluminum tripod legs with the Benro GD3 WH three-way geared head. Ta-da! I picked this tripod because it does everything I need it to and it was actually pretty cheap. I think the whole setup cost me about 380 bucks, which is considerably cheaper than Brenda, which came in at 1500. No regrets, great tripod. I picked the legs because they hit the height that I was looking for. It had a stable center column and it was light enough uh, I don't notice the difference between carbon fiber and aluminum. I think this whole thing comes in right around five pounds, five and a half pounds, and uh, it was cheap. I think the legs were like 170 something bucks. I picked this head because it was well rated and affordable. There are other better quality gear heads out there. They're more expensive. A lot of them use a proprietary plate. They're just weird and this one just, it just, it works. And again, I, I mentioned that I wanted something that took Arca Swiss plates, this one does. Manfrotto makes the 410, which is like the gold standard of geared heads, but Manfrotto uses this proprietary plate on the 410 that's so proprietary, not even other Manfrotto heads take that plate. And that to me was like a deal breaker, it was dumb. It was also like more expensive to the point where I just, it just didn't make sense for me. All right, so here's the thing. I can talk all the day about how I love this tripod and how it, it really is perfect for real estate, but what I'd rather talk about a little bit is the things I don't like, because I think that kind of helps make an impression more than like someone just talking fluff and saying how great everything is. Believe me though, it's great, I love this thing. But I've used it a lot and I know there's some quirks about it. Uh, a couple things, first off, the feet, these guys, they would just unscrew all the time. They're always flopping around. Uh, I almost lost them a couple times. I decided that I would just throw some Loctite on these and permanently keep them on. This is only ever gonna be an indoor tripod, so I'm not worried about having to put spikes on it or anything. Once I Loctited them, they've been good. They don't move at all. It's been actually perfect, so a minor thing. Also, the stop point on the center column that has the hook here, this comes unscrewed all the time. I'm considering Loctiting it as well. 
but once that's done, it's not a big issue at all. Nothing to actually really have to worry about. Um, I hate when tripods have this foam thing. I, it's just, I don't like it. It's, it's great to grip onto, but it's harder to sanitize. And when I'm constantly having to worry about that during the end of days, uh, it's just one of those things. I would cut it off, but it's actually glued on. So I'm afraid if I cut it off, I'd just be tearing it and there'd be like chunks of foam on there and it'd look gross and it'd be gross. So I just kind of left it on and clean it as best as I can. The center column wing nut lock, not a fan of the wing nut style. I prefer one of these on the center column here. That's just easier, it's more comfortable. I notice that when I'm moving quickly to raise and lower this between seated height and cabinet height, if I don't grip it well, uh, it pinches weird parts of my fingers. Like it's like pinching a nerve, it's really painful. So I, maybe like, tape some foam on here or something, but as long as you grip it right, it's okay. Just be aware of that. Um, I greatly prefer something with an actual twist lock like that. Okay, this is one that it bothers me a lot, but it probably wouldn't bother a lot of other people. The Arca Swiss quick release plate here. Uh, first off, it's a twist lock. Um, and I hate twist locks. I'd much rather have a lever clamp like the Really Right Stuff or a three-legged thing. Certain models have that. Uh, but it's integrated. It's part of the actual plate. I can't remove it. I can't change it at all. It's just, that's what I'm stuck with. So that's kind of annoying. The other thing, and this one really gets me, is be that twist lock part, the actual knob to twist it. Benro did an amazing job at rubberizing everything that you touch on here to make it really easy to grip except the knob. This is like the slickest plastic. It's like even like, it's like covered in snot. I can never get a grip on it. And I have to wear gloves when I'm shooting because of, you know, the apocalypse. And I, I couldn't get a grip. I couldn't, I had to like bring a rag just to be able to grip onto it and open this thing up. So instead I threw some gaff tape on there and it's much better. I still do sometimes need something to wrench on there to open it, but it's just one of those things like Benro, like what were you thinking? Like put something on there to make it easier. Again, not a big deal. You can fix it, but it was just, it was annoying. So the thing about geared heads, that's pretty cool. And each different model has a different way of doing it. But when you turn the geared head, make sure I'm doing it right. When you turn it, it's precise motion, but there's also a, sec a set of other knobs that when you crank on it, you can quickly adjust. And that's awesome. It makes it super fast, especially when panning, because uh, that's something I do all the time is pan quickly. However, when you switch from the quick adjust mode back into the precise movements, oftentimes it, it skips a couple gears. Like it takes a second for it to click back into place. Of course it's not doing it now. Are you serious? It does it every time when I use it. It's just kind of annoying and it jumps around and it doesn't catch right away. I don't know if that's a problem with the design of this particular one, or if that's just something that's inherent in all geared heads. And that's entirely possible because of the mechanics required to do both of those things. Hard to fault it, just be aware of it. And on top of that, the pan is easy to turn side to side a couple degrees, even when it's locked down. That's actually kind of handy though, because a lot of times I'll set up the photo, I'll take it, it's counting down to bracket, and I notice my third wall's not heavy enough, so I crank it to one side real quick, and then I'm saved from having to reshoot that one spot. It's dumb, but it's something I noticed. Okay, so in conclusion, I really like this guy. This is, I think, one of the best options you can have for real estate photography. It's cheap, it's light enough weight, it's, it's pretty good quality for the price. Um, it's easy to use, it's fun to use, like I don't hate, you know, using this thing. It kind of checks all the boxes. I think this is easily one of the best options for real estate photography, especially for the price if you don't want to drop a lot of money. You can go different routes for way more money, but I don't know if the quality or ease of use or any of that would even make a huge enough difference to justify the price. Yeah, it has some flaws, but none of those come even close to me wanting to swap any of this out. It's great, I love it. These are the things that I feel are important for real estate photography uh, tripods. Again, I didn't get any of this information when I was starting. I probably could have looked up a YouTube video. Maybe there's something out there. I still haven't looked because I don't wanna know. So I hope you know this is something useful for you guys if any of you are starting to do real estate. This is kind of key, like having a good tripod that does all the things you need it to do is so important. And I can't recommend the Benro 8,000 numbers and syllables and vowels and letters and stuff, along with the uh, head that has another 8,000 letters and numbers. Uh, I can't recommend that high enough. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys later.
Maybe I'll do a review on Brenda. Should I do a review on Brenda? Let me know. I kind of want to review Brenda. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>